What's up, it's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're blasting Perverted Ceremony, Sabbat of Bezil. Nuclear War Now, put this bad boy out. One of my favorite Nuclear War Now releases. And this is some rotten black metal filth that channels the old spirit of Barthrum and Beherit. And speaking of Beherit and Nuclear War Now, fucking hails to YK at Nuclear War Now for putting the Oath of Black Blood out on cassette. I really like this retro style Nuclear War Now's going for with some of their new reissues of kind of long, not long lost, but pretty much releases I never thought would see the light of day, like another great example cosmetically the amputation demos like making it look like a legit mixtape but still keeping it real with the Nuclear War Now logo and stuff, it's fucking bad ass and the same here it's fucking sick looking cosmetically and Beherit, The Oath of Black Blood, is one of those releases. It wasn't meant to be a full length. It's technically two demos, but it plays like a full length. And holy shit, does this still stand up today. I actually find it amazing that this stands up today as well as it fucking does. Because I haven't heard this in a couple years, and I'm a big fan of Drawing Down the Moon, and that's a little bit more of Beherit becoming Beherit. This was a time before Scandinavian black metal really took off, to where when you even look up some old interviews with the band, they're like, well, we're not really a death metal band. And at the time, black metal wasn't really, you know, black metal yet. We just were playing metal. And I found that very humbling. Because they could have easily said, like, it was a recent interview, but it was about this time period. And they could have easily said, like, yeah, we, we invented that shit. But, like, they didn't. And they stuck to the fucking truth. Because the truth is, tape trading is one of the main reasons why the Oath of Black Blood exists. And these two demos, both from 1990. And that is, demo, <laughs> see I'm going to fuck this up right here. Because I always forget if it's Demomancy, Demomancy, <laughs> but the Demomancy demo from... 1990, and then the Dawn of Satan's Millennium demo from 1990 kind of changed extreme music in a big fucking evil way. And that was taking a lot from the tape trading scene and two bands especially, Sarcophago and Blasphemy. Without those two bands and tape trading, I don't know if the Oath of Black Blood would exist. Or it would, and it just wouldn't sound as fucking gnarly as it does, because this is a perfect example of black death metal. And I know they said, well, it's not death metal, it's not black metal, we just play metal. Nowadays, you take a look at this, and this is the blueprint for almost every single slab of evil as fuck, bestial black death metal. And it's completely understandably so. Like, I was watching footage of Beherit playing live outside of a fucking mall in the middle of the day, and people are just walking by, minding their own business, there's a couple people that are obviously there to see Beherit, 
But even them, I feel like it's going over their heads a little bit. By the time Drawing Down the Moon came around, though, Beherit had kind of changed their style a little bit for a more atmospheric blend of bestial savagery, where this is just complete, almost like a train going off the rails, but they know that they're not going to go off the rails, if that makes any sense. Like, it's a perfect blend of what you would consider bestial black death, a.k.a. war metal. This is absolute filthy sounding, and I mean that in the best fucking way possible. The Demomancy demo alone is amazing, but Dawn of Satan's Millennium? That's my personal favorite, and the fact that the Oath of, the, the Oath of Black Blood is kind of laid out like a full length, it works. Because you kind of get this like little act break almost. It's almost like an intermission. And it's just fucking amazing how they laid everything out without even knowing it at first. Because at first it was just two separate demos. And I'm not sure what year that they actually put them together into one and released it under the title The Oath of Black Blood. But Dawn of Satan's Millennium was recorded in October of 1990 and the art was done by Chris Moyen. And as you could tell, so many bands owe their entire careers to Beherit being involved in the tape trading scene. I know for a fact, based on an interview I watched, Blasphemy and Sarcophago are one of the main reasons why this sounds as gnarly as it fucking sounds. But also, being heavily involved in tape trading, you're also hearing like Morbid Angel and Amon and stuff. And you can hear those influences as well, because there's parts on here where the vocals are just straight up guttural and really like rooted in straight up death metal. And it's fucking great. But beyond all the savagery are some of the fucking coolest sounding riffs ever in the genre. And two pioneering gentlemen from Finland. They had a third member. I'm not sure names off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank. I should know this. But... I'll put a little clip of an interview in here. Voi sanoa, että ihan alkuajoista niin Beherit oli, oli tota vakava projekti. Et tota, treenattiin tyyliin se viisi kertaa viikossa, et, et silloin oli innostus. Se oli kuitenkin sitä aikaa, että et black metal oli terminäkin on tavallaan niin uusi, että et ei esimerkiksi lehdistä tai tämmöiset, että ei niille sanon black metal mitään. Et se, oli, se oli enemmän death metal. Brutal death metal ja siitä kautta sit myöhemmin niinkö, et ei me pistetty tarkkaa rajaa, et, et ollaanko, onks Beher death metal bändi vai black metal bändi, vaan, vaan me tehtiin vaan tavallaan metallia. Sanoit, että 90-luvulla oli kuitenkin sen verran pienet piirit, et, et tota, yleensä ja keikatkin, keikkoja oli paljon harvemmalta verrattuna niinkö nykypäivään. Ja oli tavallaan monen tyylilaji, että saatte, että ensimmäinen bändi soitti ihan perusrokkikeikkaa, sitten oli jotain speed trassia siihen väliin, ja sitten saatte, että, että vikapändi oli sitten, että Beheritti tai Impale Nasarene, että, että tota, ei siihen aikaan ollut mitenkään niin tarkko, että olisi pelkästään black metal bändejä ollut, ollut tota, keikkatapahtumissa. Että. Kyllä ne alkupään keikat oli aika, aika eksottisia, 
eksoottisia, että silloin ei hirveästi tota, valittu, että et mentiin sinne mihin kutsuttiin, että et, tota, nuorisotalot, koulu, jumppasalit, uimahallio tai eteistiloja tai jotain, ihan, ihan missä vaan. Et ennen beherittiin, mä olin aika aktiivinen jo sitten tuossa tape trading skeneessä, että kassuja vaiheltiin ja, ja levyjä just ulkomaille pääasiassa se tapahtui. Et, et parampina aikoina se oli varmaan joku 20 pakettia päivässä, mitä tuli postiin. Et, No sillä oli vapaata aikaa, että kyllä sitä tyyli varmaan joku kymmenen tuntia päivässä tuli pelkästään kopattu kassui, demonauhoi, livenauhoi, treeninauhoi. Ja tavallaan sitä kautta sitten Beheritti, Beheritti sai aika laajasti sitten nimeäkin ja tietoisuutta sitten tavallaan skenen undergroundissa. Ja... Tavallaan sit, äh, flyerit liikkui niiden kassujen mukana ja sitä kautta tuli sitten toi Cine, Fancinet ja tämmöiset fanilehdet. Ja varmaan toista sitä haastattelua tuli tehty pari eka vuoden aikana. Et, et tota, aika paljon, silloin se oli tosi aktiivista, että silloin joutui tekemään töitä vähän se eteen, että et tota, miten se informaatio liikkuu. Mä olin hirveän kiinnostunut okkultismista ja kuoleman tarkoituksesta ja tämmöisestä pimeämmästä puolesta. Sitä kautta on lähtenyt tavallaan etsimään niitä vastauksia siihen yleensäkin elollisen olemassaoloon ja tarkoitukseen. Ja parhaimmat vastaukset sitten tuli tuolta buddhalaisuudesta ja Tiibetin buddhalaisuudesta ja sieltä Tiibetin kuolleiden kirjan kautta löytyi uusi näkökulma tavallaan tarkastella sit tiettyjä tapahtumia, mitä elämässä tulee vastaan. some live footage there that kind of explain it better than I could but really quick I'm gonna play you a track off the dawn of Satan's Millennium demo and let me know in the comments if you didn't know better and somebody just sent you this link today would you think this was some new just amazing bestial black death metal band or would you just be like ah this you know sounds stock to quote Lars Ulrich but there's nothing stock about the Oath of Black Blood to me this is a blueprint for bestial black death metal and there's a reason I feel that YK chose this as nuclear war now their 500th release. I feel that it's that important 
of a release that it merits that number 500 in a big way, and I could be wrong, it could have just ended up that way, and this was the 500th release by Nuclear War Now, but I kind of feel like, you know, maybe it was something that was meant to be, and when it comes to the cosmetics and stuff, I really like how Nuclear War Now is taking some of these older reissues and when it comes to the cosmetics keeping it super old school and pretty realistic as well like look at that that's so bad ass in my opinion like with the nuclear war now logo down there like fuck yeah and this is like pre-immortal and pre-hades shit and this is more straight up death metal here on Slaughtered in the Arms of God by Amputation. But these two releases by Nuclear War Now do have a lot in common. Because these artists went on, especially in Amputation, to bigger and better things. And Beherit really, really, with, you know, drawing down the moon, changed their style up to be a little more atmospheric and a little less savage and it just works so fucking well and it's just awesome seeing those early footsteps on these first two demos and it's just amazing amazing stuff so I'm going to throw on Black Mass Prayer and Beasts of Damnation real quick so you can really hear how fucking savage this sounds on cassette but as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. We were blasting Perverted Ceremony, Sabbat of Bezil, because we were going over some Beherit, and Perverted Ceremony definitely worship the altar of Beherit and white sneakers. So, let's throw this bad boy on, and you can hear for yourself. As always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hooks! <laughs>
some of those gutturals were like legit anti Bowman esque sounding. Like, holy fuck. That's what I mean when I'm saying this is the blueprint for like true bestial black death metal. Death metal. Keyword there. But don't get me wrong, there, you know, were bands before them doing this. But this is just, to me, the bee's fucking knees. Like, as much as I love blasphemy and stuff, like, I just feel like that demo especially, like, Dawn of Satan's Millennium. As much as I love Demomancy, or however you pronounce the first demo... It's the second demo that really brings the fucking hammer down, and it's a beast. That alone is worth the price of admission on the Oath of Black Blood by Beharit. Get into it. Thanks for watching again, you fucking rule. Hails. Again. Also, a big thank you to everybody that has been helping the channel out recently i appreciate it so fucking much eric pat john record labels like caligari life after death fucking head split hell yeah you guys and girls everybody you fucking rule and for the people that posted those like beharit interviews and live footage Thank you so much for, you know, giving us a glimpse into the past where before, you know, we would have to order like a live performance like that off a bootleg cassette and not even knowing if you're going to fucking get a copy. But that's kind of, you know, uh, I don't want to say that's kind of the appeal of it because it's not it's not the appeal of it whatsoever. It's the actual opposite is kind of the convenience of it but at the same time you know if it was on a tape like this you would be like I obviously want to watch the VHS version instead of watching it on YouTube so I understand completely but I think it's awesome that you know some of these interviews exist like you gotta check out the Impentago interview. It's fucking great. It's on this, like, public access show called The Meat Grinder. And it, it's amazing. Like, I highly recommend checking it out. But, as always, for the third time, thanks for watching. Hails. <laughs>